Hey, all right, let's start. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to another brand new episode of Knowledge Word Sharing. Today's interview guest is Ricky Gatwood Jr., more fondly known as Mr. Happy Man, or via his coaching persona, RPGM. He's currently based in Texas, United States. I had the pleasure to know Ricky via his interview with Jay Shetty Certification School shortly after his graduation from JSCS back in 2020. Since then, we have been connecting to each other. I can feel a certain chemistry and a feeling of brotherly affection with him, so much that we regard each other as bros. He is a Jay Shetty Certified Life Coach for Happiness. Since I'm also a recent JSCS student, effectively, he has become my senior and one of the people I look up to. His contents on happiness and fitness on various social media platforms, especially Instagram and TikTok, have been a breath of fresh air with an added twist of humor with a capital H. He has also been an avid follower of Satguru and Isha Foundation. Apart from life coaching and fitness training, he has also a trained drummer and performed on occasional gigs. He has also had a unique liking for music from Nuran Sisters. I'm also I'm so blessed and grateful to have this multi-talented person as my interview guest today. So everyone, let's give Ricky a warm welcome to the podcast interview. So bro, welcome to Knowledge Word Sharing, bro. Thank you, man. That was an awesome introduction. I almost feel, uh, now you make me nervous. Like, wow, that was big. That's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I mean, I'm just, I'm just like saying to the audience and listeners, you know, what you really are. So they have to have a gift of, of you, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, man. That really means a lot. That was huge. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Man. I'm really honored to be here, by the way. And I'm happy and uh, grateful as well at the same time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, bro. So um, I'm going to, okay. So now let's start with a very basic question for you, bro. The, yes. the first, okay. The first question is tell the audience and the listeners a bit about yourself absolutely good well you know as you know as he stated that uh i'm known as mr happy you know and that's kind of been my thing growing up ever since i've been a kid you know i was always the happy kid i always found something to laugh at uh and even the worst of times i was always the the optimistic person in the group no matter what no matter where i was at uh, and I grew up in very humble beginnings in Port Arthur, Texas. You know, both of them, we grew up very, very poor. Uh, both of my parents were there. We were raised in church. You know, uh, I had a, a kind of a typical story from a childhood as parents split up. You know, my mom became a single mother. Uh, but the funny thing about all that is that I still always maintain a spirit of being happy and optimistic no matter what. Uh, and life happened. And, you know, you can read a lot about this stuff in my book, but you know, I, I got to a point in time where I was extremely overweight after a life situation and things happened. And I found myself wanting to be happy all over again when I lost it, you know, when I, got, I was overweight. Um, and I got into fitness. I really got into working out. You know, at one point I was almost 400 pounds and I decided I'll say, like, nope, screw this. I don't like this life. <laughs> and so uh, I really got heavy into fitness. And um, and so I, we can talk about like this stuff later on, but now throughout my journey, I've learned to understand mind, body, and soul, become one with self. And uh, now I don't think I'm doing is encouraging others to do the same thing, to be able to create the life that you want, to be happy no matter what, to take situations and flip it for what you want, you know, understanding the power that's within. So a uh, long journey, but the short version is, yes, I am your life coach, your happiness trainer. I will help you be the best version of yourself in every way possible, mind, body, and soul. Wow, uh, that, that, that's a very wonderful introduction about yourself, bro. And I truly can hear the word happy being repeated several times in, in the word, in your introduction. So I can see, the I can sense that the word happy means so much to you, which brings us perfectly to the next question. And I think this question has been become viral since the question has been asked in your interview and you have included a, an Instagram video about it <laughs> in your mm. Instagram post. So the next question is, what is happiness to you? Yeah, I, I get asked that question often. But you know, the funny thing about that is, it's mm -hmm. like, as many times I've been asked that question, uh, there's, a, there's a constant no matter what, but it changes just a little bit. Every single time it changes just a little bit. And I do it on purpose 
because I want people to understand there is not one definite answer when it comes down to being happy. Okay. That's my whole point of reprogramming. So I'll, I'll say, okay, this is what happiness means to the world. Okay. The happiness means to the world is, you know, you have the thing that gives you joy, you know, so joy and happiness is synonymous. So you can run those two together. But the reason why I keep changing it up, okay, is because I want people to understand you can make happiness whatever you want it to be. Okay. So for me, I tell you, I, I'm telling you exactly what I'm going to teach you. For me, happiness means I can create the life that I want. I can reprogram my thoughts. I can reprogram my community. I can reprogram the energy around me to create the happiness life that I want. It's whatever I want it to be. It doesn't necessarily have to be money. It doesn't have to be a relationship. It doesn't have to be a job. It doesn't have to be none of that. It can be, but I can't put happiness in a bottle and say, this is it. That means I've limited it. It's just like trying to explain God and put him in a small bottle. It's like, no, you can't limit that. You gotta be, it's everything, you know? So for me, it literally is everything. Happiness is whatever I choose and decide it's going to be, you know? Uh, so that's my direct answer. For me, it's everything. Happiness is any and everything I decide it's going to be. Wow. I think you have, you have explained it really I mean, first explain happiness as a, um, you know, as a, as a state. And then also like, um, in, so in short, it's, it's everything, everything, everything in the world in nature, everything is with happiness, and I truly agree with you. Uh, one more additional question, bro. Um, some people believe that happiness should be the end goal, and some people believe happiness is a, is it's in the journey. So, which do you concur with? Which one do you agree with? You know, the funny thing about that is, and I always say things are funny. And when I say things are funny, I'm not laughing as in, you know, making fun of, but to me, in, in essence, life is interestingly funny. So I, that's why I, la I laugh and I smile a lot about a lot of things. because It's like, it's, it's really funny how we got here and what we're doing here. We don't really know. The only definite is this. There's only two definites in this life, okay, is that we were born and that we're going to die. <laughs> Those are the only two too. definites, yeah. you know. Everything in between that is completely your perception and your experience, mm -hmm. right? So if you look at happiness as the definite end, okay, especially when you try to define it as a thing, so that means once you get that thing, you're no longer happy anymore. Yes. And so you've completely stopped being happy. It's like, I'll be happy once I make a thousand dollars a day. It's like, okay, cool, you made a thousand dollars a day. Is that it? That's mm -hmm. all you want out of this entire life. That's the only thing you want. So that means your happiness just got stifled by a situation, right? So that's not the end goal. The end goal is for you to constantly create and to evolve over and over and over, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea is, as you're on this journey of life, to constantly create happiness, to constantly create these happy feelings. And that becomes a more dominant force in your life. It doesn't mean bad things are going to happen. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be sad. It just means that the more dominant force is being happy. You know, I mm -hmm. experienced some crazy stuff and it's like, oh, that happened. On to the next thing, <laughs> you know? So for me, it's, happiness can't be the end goal. It can't be, because that means once you achieve it, then you're done or your life no longer exists or it doesn't yeah, have any yeah. purpose anymore. So no longer am I encouraging and telling people to have a thing be the thing that makes you happy. It's just like, no, like look at happiness constantly over and over and over. So there's no end goal for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yet again, another brilliant explanation. So what is saying that happiness should not be limited to just a certain thing, whereas happiness should be free, like should be more than just a certain thing. I mean, it's, as, as, as you said earlier in a, in a previous question, happiness is everything. Yep. It, Thank you for it is literally everything, man. Like, you know, it's just like, if I was to put a cap on our relationship, it's like, oh, well, this is the only thing that we have, you know, mm -hmm. like we just on, on your podcast and, and that's mm -hmm. it. Like, well, you just put a cap on it, but there's so much more that can be discovered from this, yeah. you know? So if you do happiness the same way, you just put a cap on it. You're like, that's it. I, you know, I got the relationship. I'm happy. Yeah. I got the car. I'm happy. But see, here's the real thing. The real, the real answer to that is once you achieve the thing that you think makes you happy, and that's actually when the real work begins because you can't just achieve a thing and that's it. Okay. Once you get it, you got to maintain it. Okay. <laughs> now you got to keep up with that thing. And now the yeah. work comes in. And then that's when people get into a situation where they're like, I got the thing I wanted, but I'm still not happy. 
because you didn't understand it takes work to keep those things. So now mm-hmm. you have to constantly put yourself back in a place of like, do I really want these things? So mm-hmm. stop capping off being happy. Just say, no, I'm gonna be happy in every situation, you know? Okay, very interesting answer, bro. So, um, so in short, can we say that can one be happy once they are satisfied? Is it correct to say that? Yeah, but you got yes. In, in in the short, the short answer is yes. Okay, I'll say that because that's just like if somebody say, "Hey, man, if you give me a million dollars, I'll be happy." All right? You're gonna be happy mm-hmm. for a little while. You're gonna be happy for about you know maybe a day or two. But if you don't, let's let's just use that same illustration with a million dollars. Let's somebody say, if I had a million dollars, I'd be happy. I'll give you a million dollars. You're happy. You're just like, oh my God, I got a million dollars. But now you realize that, what do I do with a million dollars? But see, now that you got the thing that you wanted, you got to figure out how to keep that thing. Yeah. Okay. And so is, is that happiness sustainable for the next five years when you're trying to figure out what to do with this million dollars you got family mm-hmm. and friends calling you, you know, you got more bills and then you start buying random stuff and then you realize that million dollars got all the way back down to a thousand dollars in less than two years. Mm-hmm. So your happiness was only sustained for a couple of months or a couple of, I would say a couple of hours really, because mm, most people, okay. don't, if you, if you aren't trained and understand what to do with a million dollars, you ain't gonna be a millionaire. You can't be a millionaire. You don't know what to do with it. So now your stress kicks in. So now you're no longer happy. The happiness is gone, you know? Mm. So it's not sustainable. Cause if it was like, if it was sustainable, that means that you're constantly happy all the time. And I think that is when you really live in, in an unnecessary blissful mind state. And like you're, <laughs> you're walking around like just uh, oblivious to the obvious negative things in life. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it's not sustainable. Again, let's say if you cap it off and say, if, if I have this thing, I'll be happy. It's like, yeah, you're going to be happy for like a couple of hours or maybe a couple of days, but then that's it. It's like the same thing, like relationships. Yeah. If I had this, this person, I would be happy. Then mm-hmm. you get the person. And then a couple months later, you're like, damn, this person gets on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's the same thing, you know, mm-hmm. you don't understand what it took to get the thing that you want, you know? So that's why I always encourage people, like understand why you want the thing that you want. Mm-hmm. Like, why do you want to be happy? Why do you want that particular thing? In mm-hmm. nine times out of 10, that's what in coaching is like, I have a person explain to me why they want what they want. Yeah. And most times they can't even clear, give me a clear answer. Okay. Mm-hmm. As to why they want the thing that they want. They just want it. It's like, yeah. why do you want it? You know, you don't even know what you want. So uh, to answer your main question is not sustainable. It's not, mm-hmm. it is for a short period of time. Yeah. But after that time has passed, back to reality here we come <laughs> yeah i think yeah i think i have to agree with uh, i have to agree with you bro i mean like the one of the biggest fallacy in this world is that people do not know what they really i mean they know what they want but they do know why they want it exactly so, yeah so the so the the highlighted word is why which is purpose right so we can also link so happiness is also linked to purpose mm-hmm. so so you need to have a purpose to fully experience happiness so yeah exactly. i truly, truly agree with you bro Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So the next question is, um, I'm, the, the next question is, I'm going to link to two of your very important um, criteria of your coaching, which is happiness and fitness. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I just want to ask you, bro, how do you able to connect happiness to fitness? Oh, man, I love that question. Uh, the main thing that pops into my head, and, and it may sound like I'm being somewhat um, shallow, okay, but I'm being honest. I, I'm, I, I, I feel comfortable saying this, being a formal big guy, okay? Again, I was 400 pounds at one point. And when I was overweight and unhealthy, I didn't feel good, okay? I didn't. I was on medication. I couldn't get on rides. You know, I was uncomfortable sitting in the airplane. I didn't feel confident about myself. So I didn't, I didn't feel good, you know, versus now that I'm healthy, okay? I'm training for competitions. I look better than I've ever looked in my entire life. You know, and I'm 40 and I, I look better. <laughs> like, come on now. You know, I look better in my 40s than I did in my 20s. That's just crazy. Um, so the, the, to be able to tie the two together is that each individual person has to know themselves well enough to be honest with themselves and say if they are truly happy with their current state of physical existence. Okay. If physically, 
you are you're you're okay with your body okay you, you don't have any health conditions okay uh even if you are overweight but you still like and love the way you look great but don't lie to yourself my biggest thing is tell people don't lie to yourself don't be like yeah i like being big okay that's you're lying i'm sorry you're lying because you know again it's, it's it's for each individual person but i just know for me when i was big i was unhealthy there's a difference between being overweight or big and healthy versus being big overweight and unhealthy see i was big overweight and unhealthy so i would be lying to myself if I said I feel good when I know my blood pressure was through the roof or my cholesterol was super, super high, you know, and all my thyroid was acting all over, all over the place and made me feel sad, depressed, lethargic, all the other stuff. So to be honest with you, once I started pushing my mind and body to be better, okay, and I started seeing my body change, you know, you look in the mirror, like I said, the, the, the shallow statement is, is when you look good, you feel good. You know, it sounds very shallow, but no, it's, it's true. Like you look in the mirror, you feel good, you look good, and then you feel good. And it's been statistically proven that 90% of the people in the world who look good, they have a lot more confidence. They're a lot more successful, okay? They look good for themselves, and it's not for anybody else. And I have to preface this and say this, that looking good is not for everybody else. It's literally for you, okay? How do you want to look? Yeah. Okay. I mean, bodybuilding is completely different from being healthy. You know, I always tell people all the time, like say, I'm going for bodybuilding. So I'm going for bigger muscles, more physique. That's completely different. That's my choice. This whole athletic thing. Mm -hmm. The average person, I'm saying, look, you don't have to go for bodybuilding looks. You don't have to go for Instagram model looks. You don't have to do none of that. Mm -hmm. Just look the way you want to look. You mm -hmm. know, if you want to be average per se, whatever average really means, look average, just be healthy, you mm -hmm. know? So the truth is, is that when I became happy with my appearance, then I became a lot more confident. Then like the clarity kicked in. I was able to step up and do more things. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was confident in the way my body looked. I felt good. You know, mm -hmm. so the two are tied together. That's just the beginning foundation of it. I tell people all the time, it's like, look, your foundation, okay. is feeling good first. Cause then you have something to fall back on feel good about your your body feel good about your mind feel good about your efforts and then everything else on top of that will take care of itself you know so feeling good gives you clarity confidence it boosts your your immune system it boosts your ego just a little bit so you can accomplish all the things that you want to accomplish so yeah they're definitely tied together wow i mean like yeah, i think to i think to um to summarize what it says now when you look good you feel good when you feel good mm -hmm. You become healthier and when you feel healthier you become more confident and then you can get more clarity in life and then you can live a better life wow i mean it's just so direct and wow I just yeah i'm not serious. gonna lie bro I, I think that's the thing with me is like when i even when i studied psychology and first got into coaching i tried to be like deep and prolific and use nine syllable words and all that mm -hmm. stuff it's like no this stuff is simple like yeah. life is actually simple but we just make it complicated okay mm -hmm. it's we make it complicated because we're so like deterred by what everybody else has going on we're trying to live up to everybody else's expectation and everybody's standards it's like yo if you really just look at yourself and say i'm going to do what i need to do for myself mm -hmm. i can't live a happier life mm -hmm. i don't care about what everybody else is doing what i'm doing works and this stuff is very very simple you do a you get b <laughs> that's it you know, now it's just reprogramming the mind to say, why are you doing A so you get B, you know? So it's simple, simple, look good, feel good, feel good, look good, be more productive, be happy, be healthier. It's it's just that simple. Very well said, bro. Very well said. Okay. So the next question is about the about your, your book, okay? Because um, you, have, mm -hmm. you, have, you have written a book called Reprogram Your Happiness, mm -hmm. which is, I think, quite, quite, it's quite a, quite a unique name. Yeah, because reprogram happiness. Because people uh, initially think, okay, happiness is just a state. Okay, we can be happy, but reprogram happiness, hmm, that's very, quite interesting. So mm -hmm. when you mention reprogram happiness, what do you actually mean by that? You know, I always say that the funny thing. <laughs> it's like, it really is funny, man, I promise you. I think it's one of the reasons why I always kind of have a smile on my face because a lot of situations in life are just interestingly funny. It's like, it's so funny. Um, 
the I because again, I told you I grew up very poor. I grew up without my dad around. We grew up mm-hmm. in strict Pentecostal church, so I was super religious. You know, um, being a black male, raised in poverty. You know, so you fight not only fighting poverty, you fighting racism, systemic systemic racism. Uh, raised in the church, so you fighting religion as well too. You know, yeah. all of these things, and I tell people, you know, even teach you this stuff in psychology. Like nine nine times out of ten, a person is their surroundings and the things they experience. Okay, most times where where you were raised, how you were raised, and things you experience. Most times they make who you are. They create this mm-hmm. character that you have been presenting to other people. Our job is to get as adults to try to figure out how to undo those things and create the life that we want. So that's where reprogramming happiness really came from. You know, mm-hmm. growing up being, I was happy, but I was also lied to. You know, nobody told me that I was poor growing up. Nobody told me that racism really exists. Nobody told me that religion was like, you know, one of the worst uh, mindsets of slavery you can never exist you know nobody told me these things mm-hmm. and it wasn't until I became like 14 maybe 15 after my parents split up uh, and we were no longer in a church and I had my ghetto cousins uh, that introduced me to <laughs> 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 bro because look I didn't watch tv until I was like 15 years old oh really so, okay so I didn't know what Michael Jackson was. I didn't know, you know, James. I didn't know. I didn't watch television like that. You know what I mean? Because we oh. were very, very Pentecostal. It was very, very strict. You know, you watch mm-hmm. TV, you go into hell. <laughs> you know, uh, oh, you hang out with this family oh. member, you're going to hell. You know, so these things happen, you know, as, as a kid. And so, again, these stuff are just in my brain. Like everything I do, I'm going to go to hell. So I can't talk to this person because I'm going to hell. You know, um, so when I say reprogram your happiness, I say even in the midst of all that, I started questioning things. I got in trouble a lot as a kid because I questioned people <laughs> about mm-hmm. everything. So I was always kind of like aware and awoke of certain things. <clears throat> and so, again, when you question things as a kid, you either got punished or whipped, you know. Um, and so, but in the midst of all that, I still maintain a level of optimism, like staying happy, you know, always kind of silly you know, in the, in the worst of situation, that was just me, who I was. I've always, I don't know how I became that way. That's just who I was, you know? Um, And so well, the reason why I wrote reprogram your happiness, number one, the first thing was, it was just a challenge. Challenge. It was a challenge for me uh, because again, I grew up in a very poor school system and I've been in reading classes since I can remember. Mm. Uh, Ever since since I was in kindergarten, I was was always in reading classes. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't when I was in high school, uh, one of the teachers, they try, they diagnosed me with dyslexia. They say you're dyslexic, uh, you can't read properly. And the uh-huh. funny thing is, I, I found out that it wasn't that I had dyslexia. Okay, um, they couldn't teach me the way my brain was comprehending with words. Mm-hmm. So I could read just fine. I could no problem. I can articulate just fine, but it never registered in my brain. And the work that they were giving me wasn't correlating with my brain, my thought process. Right. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't until I was in 11th grade and one of my teachers, uh, Ms. Ba- Ms. Barnes, I never forget her name. She said, ah, I see what's going on in your brain. Your mm-hmm. brain is processing information this way. But so mm-hmm. what I was doing, even to this day, I do this. I'll read something and I, I get it. But my thought automatically goes into why are they talking about this? <laughs> That's my thought process. <laughs> so it wasn't that I didn't understand what they were saying. I'm like, why does this even matter at this point in time in life? That's where my brain would mm-hmm. go every single time. So I'm mm-hmm. questioning the literature. Like, what are these documents? Why are these, you know what I'm saying? So I'm reading and I'm skipping over stuff. I'm like, why are we even talking about Christopher Columbus? This doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, why are we even talking about freaking uh, the, the Boston Tea Party and we live in America? You know what I'm saying? Like, I was, yeah. th- those are the type of questions I had. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just read social studies and social studies were my worst subjects because I, I really questioned everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so <laughs> when my teacher told me that, A, I couldn't read and I would be in reading classes most of my life and I would have some type of speech impediment, I actually did develop a stutter from it because of what they said for me. So I would stutter, I would stumble over my words. So writing the book was a coaching challenge for me. I have this tenacious mindset of I'm going to do the exact thing that you said I can't do. So 
writing a book was something I never thought I could do. Like, wow, I've had a reading problem mm-hmm. and I, I, and I, you know, I can't write. So and I have horrible handwriting to this day. Uh, but so I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to write a book. And wow. so I literally told my story from when I was a child up into my experience in California, when I was homeless and broke uh, up until when I moved back to Houston. And it was kind of like part one of everything. But to be honest with you, it wasn't even a real mm-hmm. planned book. I was just like, I'm going to do it just because I said mm-hmm. I, I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, so it wow. was more of a, of a personal challenge for me. And I, I do the same thing with my clients and coach them and teach them. I say, look, the thing that you are afraid of is the thing that you need to tackle. Okay. Your fear is also the thing that's going to get you to the next place in life. If you tackle that thing, mm-hmm. you're going to be a okay. Okay. I always say this, the, the, the answer is in the problem. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the problem is in the answer. So you know what the problem is? That's mm-hmm. also the answer, <laughs> you know? So the book was really just a challenge for Ricky to say, you know what? I'm going to write a book because somebody said I couldn't. Wow. Wow. That's, that's truly amazing, bro. So basically the book is a, is a, is a product of you challenging yourself. Wow. That's just amazing, bro. I mean, personally, I purchased a copy of the book and I've read the book. I, I just find it really amazing. Like every, every it's, it's, it's quite a thin book, but then it, it, it has some content, bro. And I truly like agree with what you're writing in the book, bro. So yeah, I truly agree with what you said. And just now when you said that you have been you, you have some history of stuttering and some speech problem, mm-hmm. well, I truly resonate with that because um growing um growing up, bro, um I only started to speak when I was five years old. Really? Yeah. In fact, in fact, in fact, in the mid uh, I was for the first semester of my kindergarten, I was mute. I can't speak. Wow. I can't speak. And and you know my parents Thought, uh, I mean, some even thinking that okay, uh, we, uh, is there something wrong with this boy? Because um, you know, we, we, until five years old, we can't speak. But then, bro, amazing thing happened when I start to read a lot of read, reading materials. By mm-hmm. the second semester, I just start to speak my first word, and from there, poof, it was very fast. It was wow. very um quick. Yeah. See. The the development rate of my speech was very quick. Yeah. That's great, man. Yeah. See, and that's the kind of stuff we're talking about with the mindset. Like, yeah. you know, people, we, we allow people to tell us what we can't do only because they don't take the time to figure out what we can do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if people take the like real teachers, man, if real teachers took the time to like facilitate our growth and be like, hey, this is what you're actually good at doing, mm-hmm. then we can become so much better people. But when you have a poor school system, that just mm-hmm. kind of gives everybody these general, you know, lessons. And, mm-hmm. you know, the one illustration I always use um, <laughs> is trying to t- make an elephant climb a tree. <laughs> okay. And I was yeah. like, you, an elephant is not meant to climb a tree. A monkey is meant to climb a tree. You know what I mean? But we put everybody yeah. in the same boat and say, everybody has to climb a tree. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, that's mm-hmm. not what, that's not his job and not what he can do. You know, exactly. so we have to learn how we learn. And then mm-hmm. you can prosper that way, you know, man. Matter of fact, funny, mm-hmm. funny story. Uh, when I was at ITT out here in Houston, uh, mm-hmm. I, I did a, I did a technical course in electronic engineering. And Miss Saeed, I never forget it to this day. Which is another, another reason why I got into uh, Eastern philosophy and everything else is she just watched me. And one day we was in physics, and she was watching me look at the board, and she said, "Ricky, why are you looking at the board like that?" I was just. I don't understand why you, and I told this, and she put me to the side. I was like, Miss Saeed, I don't understand why you, why you teach me this stuff. You know, and she said, well, it's part of the curriculum. This is how, you know, you pass and get your, your degrees and everything. But I was like, why do I need this information? You know, and Miss Saeed, she said, I'm, I always laugh and I do my accent. She said, okay, Ricky, let me sit down. I talk to you about what's going on. And she said, the way your brain is, you <laughs> you're thinking too much and I was like I know Miss Aid, but it doesn't really make sense to me uh but she was explaining to me she said she did, I'll never forget the word she said she said the way you see things is totally fine but if you want to pass a certain class and do a certain thing you play their game basically what she was telling me she said you play their game and get the information and then you take it and apply it how you want it yeah. and ever since then I've been like yo 
I, I love the way you think. And, you know, then she had, she started talking to me about meditation and, and Buddhism, and Hinduism and everything. She said, you seem like a more Eastern type person. And I was like, yeah, kind of makes sense. Cause I was born and raised in the Western world. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, so she, so she actually opened up my brain up to a lot more in life. So it was very interesting. I know you didn't ask that, but it just kind of went there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, like, the, I can sense some, there's some, uh, some uh, criticism about the education system. I mean, my, if I'm not sure whether, whether you know, whether you know or don't know or not, but actually my day job is a teacher. So I could truly understand what you experience as, as a student in the school because I, I've been teaching, I, I, I'm currently teaching for 10 years right now. So I can truly understand that some, every student have a different studying needs. Like really? for a teacher. What, what do you teach? Yeah, I'm teaching maths, mathematics. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I would have been that complicated student in your class. <laughs> mm, well, not just complicated, like, you know, I'll say challenging, but, you know, I'm always up to the challenge because uh, as a teacher, we know that every student, every human being, indeed, uh, actually every human being is, is they need to have unique needs. Mm -hmm. So we know that, uh, so as, as teachers, we, 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 we have been exposed to theories like gardeners, uh, multiple intelligence, and then the, even in the, even in the, even in the coaching school, GSCS, we have been taught the VAT model, the four, mm -hmm ways of learning you know visual audio reading and right. aesthetic yeah. so every human being has a unique need so we can't have a one size fit all to teach mm -hmm. a certain knowledge yeah exactly yeah. and yes, that's and i think that's the, the way unfortunately the way this world is i mean now there's a lot of monastery schools and private class different things like that um but the masses and, and the bigger public school systems I, I, I personally don't see them getting away from this traditional way of, of learning and teaching because yeah. they, this is my personal opinion, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, they're built to make people work, okay? Yeah. Those, the public school system are built to make you feel like a worker versus an actual human being and to become a better version of yourself. Like, mm -hmm. no, hey, you're either gonna fall in one of these two or three categories and that's it. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, you, you're really limiting our intelligence by saying you have to learn this way. But what if I don't learn that way? You know, and mm -hmm. it's unfortunate that if you're not privileged to live in a, a you know, a, a school system that's wealthy, <clears throat> then you're only forced to be stuck with these, you know, low school systems who just hire any teachers that don't really like their job. I used to, matter of fact, I was hired back in 2019 before COVID hit to be a consultant for teachers. You know, mm -hmm. to come in and yeah. actually teach yeah. a happiness course. Yeah, because uh, the, the teachers had a high turnover rate. They were quitting. And I understand. Mm -hmm. And I come from a family of teachers, which is why they, they hired oh, me for it. Okay. Yeah. My, my mom, my all, my all my aunts worked in the school district. My uncle was a superintendent. Uh, oh. my, my mother aunt was a principal. Oh. So I had teachers on both sides of the family, which is why they were <laughs> like, how come you didn't become a teacher? It's like, I didn't want to do what y'all did. <laughs> 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 you know number one i found out how much money they make i'm like y'all do hot whoa no no and so I, I think teachers are underpaid too that's the number one thing i'm like man you go to school for all these years and you take less money than an nba player or you know so the, you're less valued already but your, your responsibility is to teach these kids who come to come to class they're stressed out they're mad they have family issues going on and the teachers y'all got to deal with so much i'm like I don't think I want that, you know, <laughs> but, you know, so I, I came in to uh, give teachers a different perspective as far as how to separate work life and home life and get back mm -hmm. to creating a simple life for yourself. Yeah. It's like, I understand, like, you know, I know you got to be to work at a certain time. You got to write certain curriculums. You got to deal with all these kids. And my biggest thing for teachers is like, when do you have time for yourself? When do you create the time for yourself? Are you actually, you know, are you working out? Are you eating properly? You know what I'm saying? Are you meditating? Are you taking those intentional self-care moments? And most teachers are not. They're just go, 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 go. I got to be class on time. I, I'll mm -hmm. eat whatever is available in the lunchroom. Uh, when I get home, I got to do grades. Then I got to yeah. deal with the kids and the family. And you're just constantly depleting yourself over and over and over. And then five, 10 years in the game, then you're like, what have I been doing all this time? 
you know, then you realize that yeah. you never had a life, you know? So it's like, no, do what you're going to do. And I'm glad that you love it, but make sure you put yourself first. That's one of the main things I teach people. And especially yes. when I'm coaching, you know, when I say reprogramming happens, that means no, take care of you first, do what you have to do for yourself first before you start giving to other people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, I know it kind of got off subject a little bit, but that was on my mind. I had to say it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, it's okay, but I mean, thank, thank you for all, thank you all for all the sharing because I think you'll be seeing what you're saying is absolutely true. I mean, like, firstly, to say that um, schools have not been changed for over 300 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, schools haven't, haven't changed much since the first industrial revolution, which is what, in, 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 the, 18, in the 19th century? So Crazy. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's almost 300, 400 years. School system haven't changed much. Because initially, mm -hmm. in the first industrial revolution, school was created to create factory workers. We are now in 2021. And mm. Even if you see in certain schools, the arrangement of the desks and tables doesn't vary much. Mm -hmm. That's so, crazy, man. Yeah. That's the part that, that kind of, I guess it bothers me just a little bit. It's like, as humans, you know, we're supposed to be evolving. We're supposed to be trying mm -hmm. to find ways to become better. Mm -hmm. But we understand that like the, the powers that be to see like, hey, this system works because it keeps people separated which is why you have these different classes lower class middle class upper class mm -hmm. but nowadays it's not even that it's either you poor or you rich <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. middle class almost doesn't exist anymore you know uh you know so it's just like these systems are meant to keep people in certain categories you know and we're supposed to be evolving but we're not when we can we evolve everything else. Think about it. We evolve from the horse buggy all the way to electronic cars. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, from you know, from every from everything. Just just our life. This right here, cell phones. You know, what I'm saying from a touch dial phone to now we can talk halfway across the world just by plugging into a Wi-Fi. Yeah. So everything else has evolved. That's the part that bothers me is that everything mm -hmm. has evolved except the way we learn which I'm like, yo, that's yeah. so much more to the way we learn. You know, if I have a problem with religion and I have a problem with certain politics and I have a problem with the school system, it's like, y'all not evolving none mm -hmm. of that stuff. You're keeping it exactly the same, yeah. you know? Now it's a little bit more challenging because all the information is out there. It's so much information. And nowadays, all you gotta do is Google something and get the information and mm -hmm. see, as, a, as I'm kind of glad that, as a kid, they didn't have Google because I would have been all, oh my God, I would have been the worst kid in history. I already know it. <laughs> Man, they had Google growing up. Boy, I would have been, oh, I found this on Google today. So you lying, teacher. <laughs> you know, so that's the thing, man. There's just so much information out there so we can evolve. And that's the part that bothers me. It's like, why aren't we evolving if we can? You know, but it's to keep certain people in certain places and to keep the system in place when it's yes. not necessary, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Thank you for that, bro. Um, okay. So now next, I want to ask about um, your your coaching persona, which is RPGM. So mm -hmm. when you started RPGM, uh, what was your intention and purpose and what is your target audience? You know, the point... The interesting thing about RPGM, uh, it started off as being uh, Ricky Paul Get What Motivates, because wow. my middle name is Paul. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it started off as that because everybody knew me as a motivational speaker at first. Mm -hmm. And I, I really started getting into motivational speaking. So I was like, oh, Ricky Paul Get What Motivates. Okay. And, and it still, still kind of works to this day. <clears throat> but then when I started doing into reprogramming, it's technically the same thing. It's just the R, the P, and the G, and M, and reprogram. So it all kind of still works together. So, uh, but mm -hmm. RPGM, yeah, so it, it goes both ways. So it's like RPGM is more about motivating you to reprogram your life, you know? And that's why I got the heartbeat at the beginning and at the end, because mm -hmm. that's the only thing that's definite. You start your life, you reprogram everything, and then when life is over, that's it, you know? Oh. So that's a, a, symbolically, it represents the beginning, the middle, and then the end at the same time. Okay. Wow. The only the only two things that are infinite is us being born and then us passing. You know, we don't know what happened after that, but everything else in between, you can reprogram your life how you want to. Uh, and you know, my my particular artist, man, you know, I I've noticed that I'll get middle-aged people, normally from 30 up to like 60, 
you know mm-hmm. it's really it's a really weird place because most of that that particular age group has gone through a lot of things and they're not trying to figure themselves out mm-hmm. you know either they have a family and they're stuck you know uh or they they you know they want to get they coming out of a situation they're about to go into another situation so mm-hmm. and it's like the, the people that kind of get stuck and caught up in the rut of i don't know what i'm doing in my life the other ones that come to me i'm like hey let me help you reprogram everything that you've been taught from the age of, of, of a kid up until now, you know, uh, that's my first group. First group of people are like people who just like, they feel stuck and they, they need to find a new purpose in life. Come see me, you know, the ne- my next group is typically people who are just overweight and unhealthy. You know, mm-hmm. if you're unhealthy or overweight, you know, obviously my story is I was overweight, I was unhealthy. Um, and so I help those people too. So middle, middle aged people who are stuck and people who are out of shape and want to get back in shape. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I think, um, I think your, your coaching niche is very suitable now because now, especially in, in where many places are still experiencing lockdown and COVID and many people are staying at home. So I think your coaching niche will definitely serve a lot of people out there. You know, like, yeah. it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no, it really, I, I think people are seeing it now because not only that, uh, I've, I've tapped into more holistic healing, which is another company I, I run this I am remedies. And so what we've done, which is something else that allowed me to heal myself from thyroid issue is understanding what medicine is doing. Because I didn't want to get take medicine. I was like, I was like, screw it. I'm not taking that medicine. You know what I mean? Because it made me feel weak, tired, lethargic, and everything else. It had adverse effects. So I was like, why would I take something to make me feel worse? Uh, and mm-hmm. so what I started doing is looking up the medicine and all the ingredients in the medicine. And then I find the herbs that complement the medicine. I was like, oh, well, that that particular medicine is this herb, technically. Mm. It does the same exact thing. So I started going mm. one by one. And then now I started to find out, man, it's all herbs. Like everything, everything that we need to heal ourselves is from the earth. Mm-hmm. It's literally right here. So with Iron Remedies, what we found a way is like, look, let's extract those herbs, put in a tincture. And if you have high blood pressure, thyroid issues, uh, cholesterol issues, any type of nervous system issues, there is a herb for it, okay? Mm. And it's very simple nowadays. We learned the, the organic way to extract it out of the herbs, put in a tincture, take it, put it in your drink, and you drink it, you know? So mm. there's ways to naturally heal yourself, I know? And so now, like, with COVID and everything happening, people are starting to realize that it has so much more to do with this medicine. It's your state of mind. It's your overall health yeah. because this this infection this virus is not you know targeted to any person nowadays it's just it's going to everybody so the main thing you could do i tell people all the time i'm not saying i can cure you what i'm telling you is <laughs> that you need to give yourself a fighting chance okay you know yeah. give yourself a fighting chance and the only way you give yourself a fighting chance is by being happy and healthy <laughs> okay keep your stress level mm-hmm. low and your, your immune system yeah. high oh, that's it if you do that at least you give yourself a fighting chance but i know people who have covid and they've had the worst conditions. And I know all those people who had it and they just had a normal cold or sneeze or whatever and they were done, mm-hmm. okay? So what I'm noticing is that the people that are actually healthy, they have a, a, fight, a better fighting chance and their symptoms aren't as like mm-hmm. vital or as deadly, so say, you know? Uh, so that's the biggest thing, man. It's like, look, nowadays you just have to figure out how your body functions. And that's what I do. I take the time to help people figure out how their body functions, okay? Everybody can't do the same thing. <laughs> you know, you got to figure out what system works best for you. And then you implement that system. And now that's your new life. It's a whole nother part of reprogramming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, like in in our off-camera competition, like we were talking a lot about your IM, um, IM products and, and I, I'm quite interested to purchase one as well in the future. So I, I'd like to purchase one in the future as well. So um, since you mentioned about that, I want to ask, in your opinion, why do you believe using organic products is important for one's well-being? Mm. Well, the main reason is, honestly, is because like we've been fed so much synthetic stuff, okay? Because we live in a popcorn community. Look, look we live in such a, a popcorn community where everybody wants everything fast. Yeah. And the, the big pharmaceutical companies and the big you know FDAs in the food industry, they know that we want stuff fast. So how do you produce something that's actually organic fast is to synthetically make it, right? 
you add some stuff to it so we can push it out faster. Let's push it out faster. We don't care about quality. We just care about quantity. You know what I mean? That's the thing. So like, and here's the thing I keep telling people all the time. It's not, not saying that even things that they say are, are organic or organic, not hundred percent true. The thing about most organic stuff is it has more organic ingredients than the stuff that's overly processed. Okay. So what I'm saying is as human beings here on this earth, okay, that we come from this earth, we come from the universe and God and everything that exists. Why would you want to constantly put fake things into your system? Yeah. If you are a real person, okay. If you are a machine, a robot, or a car, I see putting synthetic oil inside your body <laughs> or gasoline inside <laughs> your body. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's, it's made up, okay? A machine is made by a man, and it takes certain man-made things to make these machines work. Mm -hmm. You're not a machine. You are a functioning, flesh-made human being, which means you should be eating functioning and flesh made things yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty pretty simple but because we like i said the system the powers that be understand that hey they just want food it doesn't matter just get the food together and put it out there let's just throw some msg gmos all the other stuff in there just to get it out there so now the the body is so amazing which is why when we start talking about fitness stuff it's like the body is so amazing your body knows what to do with certain things when it's when it when it gets once it gets inside your system Okay. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't know what to do with it, it has an awesome defense mechanism that stores it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But just like anything else, if you put too much shit in one place, <laughs> okay, it becomes a disease at some point in time. You know what I mean? So that's the thing mm -hmm. with our body. Our body has an amazing filtering system, which is why you could put some synthetic things inside your body and your body's like, I'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of that. But if you do it too much, the body's like, I can't get rid of this stuff fast enough. So now what has to happen, your organs have to work twice as fast to try to figure out where to put this stuff in or how to get it out your system. And if it can't get into your system, it sits there, lies dormant, then it becomes a disease. And before you know it, you got a blood disease. Before you know it, your heart rate has to increase. You try to push blood everywhere where it's supposed to go. Your pancreas is working twice as hard. And now you have a health condition, okay? Mm -hmm. So why push organic food more than anything else? Cause you have to put your body back into a natural state of being. That's mm -hmm. the main reason you need to put your body back into a natural state of absorbing natural earth grown foods. Mm -hmm. Period. It's like, why would you continue? If you know for a fact that it's like, it's almost like swallowing gasoline, knowing that, you know, Oh, see, see the, the brain is so amazing. Even though we know certain things aren't good for us, it'll digest it and then figure out what to do with it later. So you can swallow gasoline, Okay. It may eat your insides up a few minutes later. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But you know, you, your brain is saying, Oh, I have some fluid in my system. Thank you. But then once it gets into your system, it's like, Oh, this ain't good for me. Oh crap. Get rid of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what's happening with the body. So why eat organic things, organic things, once it gets to your system, the mind and the body. So we talk about becoming one with God. How are you made from this god is everything god is everywhere omnipresent so you being from god from the earth you should feed yourself things that come from the earth so you continue to become one with it so your body can identify with that thing so you can eat it digest it absorb it use it okay if your body can't see it digest it absorb it and use it then if it can't get rid of it it stores it somewhere in this amazing body mm -hmm. That's why we should eat organic foods. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I totally agree with you. 100%. I agree with you. Yeah. And also, even Sadhguru had mentioned in one of his, one, one of his talks, like every food, we have a thing We have a thing called pranic value. Pranic value means energy value. Every food gives energy. So mm -hmm. we, should look for, we should look for food which gives us high pranic value so that it can right. give us a high prana or high energy to us. Because um, even in Ayurveda, we believe food is a medicine food is medicine medicine is food so if we eat food at the correct amount uh, i mean the correct type of food at mm -hmm. the appropriate amount it, it will be beneficial for us if we eat the wrong type of food at excessive amount it will it will become a disease for us so I absolutely totally, yeah I totally no no you're right yeah go ahead go, you continue what you were saying uh, no i mean 
I just want to say that food, uh, we should treat food as medicine and medicine as food. So we should eat food, appropriate food at the proper amount. Yeah. Absolutely, man. You know, it's something, man, it was about, I think almost five years ago when I got introduced to Saguru, which is so amazing. And I heard, uh, I forgot the lady name, she was introducing him and we were talking about foods and everything else. And mm -hmm. uh, she said, vitamins, right? And I was like, oh, what about vitamins? We were doing this whole course on <clears throat> understanding vitamins and supplements and different things like that. And she said it, but I don't think she caught it. And then later on, I went back because I was like, oh my God, it's just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. She said, vitamins are vital minerals. And I was mm -hmm. like, what? <laughs> and it was like, oh, vital minerals, vitamins. This is where yeah. the freaking word comes from, man. It's <laughs> vital minerals that your body needs to function, vitamins. And I was like, oh my God, all these years. <laughs> Yeah. You know, people say, yeah, just told them my mind was just like screwed up, blown, like, holy crap, the shit. Like nobody said that, you know what I mean? So if you think about vital minerals, okay, where do you get all your vital minerals from? You get it from food, okay? Yeah. So the, the these pharmaceutical and uh, drug companies, they push vitamins, okay? Because they, now they, they understand, which is people, we still don't get it to this day. When people go out in the store and they buy vitamins, not realizing that the vitamins are just a supplement for the vital minerals you're supposed to be getting from food. Yep. It's not the pills. You don't need the pills unless you're deficient in a particular thing. Okay. Yep. So the, the pharmaceutical companies know that most people are deficient in these top five alphabets, right? A, B, C, D, E, G, mm -hmm. right? So they say, go out and buy these vitamins. Okay. Because you need it because you're not getting enough without saying, Hello, dummy. Mm -hmm. If you eat these foods, <laughs> you know, you will have all the vital minerals that you actually need. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the only time it's necessary to buy vitamins is if, let's just say, you go to a doctor and they say, yo, you're really deficient in vitamin D or vitamin E. Mm -hmm. You may need an extra supplement to do so. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now you go buy you a vitamin E or a D, not all of them not a b c d f g b g but there's a the body has a needs 102 i think it's 102 vital minerals that the body needs mm -hmm. right and we don't even know them we just talk about get your vitamin a b c and d right mm -hmm. yo we're talking about 102 102 minerals that your body actually needs to function right mm -hmm. and we don't we're not even covering the surface of that most of it you get it through food so mm -hmm. even in the talk with uh with side crew and in, in engineering group you know I learned that, you know, certain cultures eat food in, in a circular pattern and at certain times, okay? Like over here in America, we just eat everything. Go, no, rice, corn, <laughs> beans, eat it all, you know, at the same time, you know what I mean? <laughs> but in order for your body, and this is what, this is the one culturally, that one thing that separates uh, most Americans from other cultures, I, I realized even in Spain, they'll eat, they'll eat their meats at one, one point in time. They'll eat mm -hmm. their vegetables at one point in time. They'll mm -hmm. eat their carbs at one point in time. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the one one of the things that I learned from that is that they make that it helps them to enjoy their dinner a whole lot better. And they can sit and talk and hey, let's everybody eat our meat right now. Yeah. But now physiologically, what's happening is your body is actually able to digest each one of those food groups a whole lot better mm -hmm. and use it appropriately. Okay, so when we talk about like macronutrients or how many macronutrients that you need, and that's a word that gets talked around all the time, mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, you gotta have a certain amount of carbs, proteins, and fats. Okay, mm -hmm. once you get that, you still have to figure out how your body digests foods. Okay, so that's what I had to learn, even with this whole thyroid thing. Is like, oh my God, I cannot mm -hmm. eat all food at the same time. My mm -hmm. metabolism and my thyroid produces in a different type of way, so I have to eat in a particular pattern. Yeah. So I'll eat my meats first take a break, eat my carbs next, take mm -hmm. a break, then mm -hmm. eat my vegetables next, you know? And it, another thing it helps do is helps you slow you down, man. It helps slow you down big time. So you're not like, ah, I gotta eat. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not going crazy eating all the time, man. You know, so slow down, eat your mm -hmm. food properly so your body can actually digest it and use it versus trying to scarf everything at one time. And so this will be about good gut health. It's like, how do you have good gut health? Well, you allow your your gut to actually digest food properly, okay? But if you don't know how to eat properly or what to eat properly, the only thing you're doing is stuffing stuff in your stomach, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
And then mm-hmm. on um, stuffing and stuffing and stuffing. And again, eventually your stomach's like, I can't keep up with this shit, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up with this, you know what I mean? So it just starts storing <laughs> stuff everywhere. And then like I say, mm-hmm. anything that sits long enough, uh, it festers and become a disease. And mm-hmm. uh, before you know, you end up getting sick. So yeah, yeah, something very unique about food and eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, um, I'll, the next question which I'm uh, about to ask you, bro, I mean, like you have mentioned, a, you have explained a bit in the in the answer just now, but I'm going to ask you this. Um, how do you gravitate to Sadhguru's teaching and how does it impact your life? Man, you know, Sadhguru, in my, in my mind, was like my grandfather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He, uh, <laughs> you know, when, when I was making this transition, to from religion to spirituality he was the first guru i was ever actually introduced to mm-hmm. uh and I, i started again i actually stumbled upon this video i was watching one of les brown's motivational speeches and then on youtube mm-hmm. you know somebody always posts something right after that and i was like huh what's this guy here big beard uh you know middle eastern <laughs> guy i was like huh, okay all right so uh I, i listened to him and if i remember correctly one of the first speeches that he talked about was quality of life Mm-hmm. talking about quality of life and he was like you can and i say it to this day i keep saying it over and over and over this is why you know i keep saying you can create the life that you want you know and he's like everything is in your making mm-hmm. you know there is no <laughs> there's no magical god in there but it's in your making it's only because that's what you chose to perceive as god and then he went and carried on with you know creating the quality of life that you want and say anything that you want to do is in your making you know there's no good there's no bad there's just things it's your perception of a particular thing and i could not get past that one particular part he says it's your perception of good and bad that makes it good or bad you know yeah. there is no good or bad there's just life you know and he said it so like casually and so comfortably and i've never seen that in my entire life Right, because I grew up in Pentecostal church. So everything was like, oh, no, 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 no. you know what I mean. So everything was like that, and it was like super, super intense. You know what I mean. And so, so like seeing seeing somebody say something so profound, so calmly, and so like casually, so relaxed. You know, laughing, and, and it's kind of I'm not gonna lie, I kind of get that you know, from him, you know what I mean? Just the the casual way of talking and laughing and being, if you watch his, he's laughing and joking about half the stuff he's talking about. Mm-hmm. But it's in a way that, you know, I got it because that's how I was growing up. You know, everything was kind of a, like a light joke to me, you know, not in like a, a rude or conceited way, but it was just, it's a light joke. You know, it's like, this is life, loosen, loosen up. You know what I mean? Like you can't control things, you know, like you, everything is in your making. You want to be negative, that's exactly what you're going to get. You want to be positive, that's exactly what you're going to get. But essentially it's just all your perception and your experience you know so uh i got into i started watching i, I became a i went to college at youtube <laughs> i went to youtube college <laughs> <laughs> I, i became a professional youtube student uh and people ask me <laughs> i got multiple certifications and in, in, in courses and all that good stuff but dude, i became obsessed with watching youtube videos and i was like y'all don't realize all the information is right here You know, mm-hmm. like, I mean, I'm saying, go, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying don't go to college, but I'm saying like, um, you could YouTube anything, somebody's talking about it, apply it, learn it. So I really started just watching all of his videos, bro. I mean, if you look at my my history, it's like deep inside Guru and in, Internet Engineering mm-hmm. and Audio Vic. And so I got into it, um, it was back in 2014, I believe. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a, a long while. And so I started watching over and over and over. And it wasn't until 2018, 2017, when I got a chance to actually go to one of the engineering, inner engineering classes. Uh, and we did the 48 hours mm-hmm. of meditation and sitting. And I thought my legs were going to fall off from sitting in one position for, for 12 hours straight. <laughs> But man, it, it was it was one of the most enlightening experiences ever, you know, and I was so open to it, um, you know, coming from a background where I was at, it's like you in church and churches running around screaming, shouting and, you know, the church antics, what I call them. Uh, mm-hmm. But this experience was different, man. When you get a bunch of people in there, they dancing, they playing the music and 
you know, I just like, I'm a big guy too. I'm 6'1", 250 pounds. And so hey, I'm jumping around, just feeling free mm-hmm. in the place. And then when we got to the part where we started going through the breathing techniques uh, and then he said it, he said it too. He said, there's some people once we start going through these breathing uh, techniques and the different postures, you're going to have a release and you may hear somebody scream, cry, bark like a dog or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> the hell is he talking about? <laughs> you know, you know, I was somewhat familiar with it because in church you get people who run around and speak in tongues all the time. But, you know, he was talking about barking like a dog and mm-hmm. yelling and all that stuff. And can't lie to you, man. I was so open to wanting to become one of myself. I allowed myself to be present go through the breathing, understand the different postures. And bro, I had the biggest release in my life ever, mm-hmm. ever, ever, ever. And from that one experience, I was able to, even to this day, to tap into uh, this next enlightenment dimension. You know what I mean? Just like be present. It was like, yo, I actually felt myself transcend, you know, into another place. And I was like, oh, I want that as often as possible. And I still seek for that as much as possible to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting involved with, with an engineer and I haven't, I, I wanted to volunteer and all that stuff, but then I ended up moving back to Houston um, and I just kind of fell off with it, but I just never stopped following. I still get group chats and all that stuff to this day, uh, but I practice as much as possible. Not as much as I used to, but I'm so into his teachings now. It's like, I probably heard every last one of his speeches and there's so many, you know, so many, but it just reminds me of myself or, you know, an older version of myself being able to just speak so casually and not care about what anybody says, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I remember one, he was saying that, um, you know, somebody asked him, does he ever get mad? He was like, I mean, yeah, but you'll never see it. Now, do you want to see it? <laughs> you know, and that's kind of like my thing too. People say, Rika, you ever mad? I'm like, yeah, but you'll probably never see it. I don't give you the pleasure of seeing me get angry, you know, it's like, mm. for what? You, it's not even worth it. You know what I mean? Uh, not, it doesn't mean I'm not human. It just means that if I'm angry, I'm only, uh, I do the thing, I do this thing when I teach my clients, it's called allocated frustration, okay? You have to take four to five minutes or however long you need to just not give a shit. Just mm-hmm. don't care. Just let it loose, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and after you do that, don't carry it with you. Just acknowledge that particular moment because that makes you human, you know? That makes you human to say that, no, I have flaws and I'm pissed off, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it makes you not human and it makes you uh, more depressed and anxious when you hold it in for so long. I'm like, no, hey, you need to go find you a punching bag and let it out, <laughs> you know, and after you're done, then move on to the next thing, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, so I got to play a huge role in my life, man. And even to this day, uh, I can't stop watching the videos and it just affirms my thought process. And I didn't have a lot of mentors growing up, so I found him to be one of my mentors. So, yeah. Well. Wow. Okay, I mean, just, just just want to share with you, bro. I mean, I I I also have joined Indian Engineering this year mm. in January. In fact, in fact, I was part of the first batch. We where we get like um consecrated online, Indian Engineering online. So I was I was I was the first batch where we get really? uh, initiated online. Yes. Oh, nice, man. Yeah, yeah. The, congratulations. That's huge, man. Like I said, yeah. I I got you, mine. Bro. Back in 2000, you know, um, 2018, the whole sort of, and I just stopped in the class. So that's huge, man. I didn't, had no idea that you was that involved. Yeah. That's Thank nice, you, bro. That's Thank big. You. Yeah. And since then, I tried to do the um, the Sadhana every day. I mean, mm-hmm. to my best. But yeah, but uh, one thing I do, I do, I do notice, bro. I mean, whenever I do sa- the Sadhana, you know, the the, the pre warm up thing and then the actual um, Shambhavi, uh, Shambhavi exercise. Mm-hmm. I feel so much calmer, so much yes. healthier. Yeah, mm. I think, yeah, I can per- personally watch for that. Now, to the audience and listener out there, uh, just for cl- just for clarity, I do not get paid by Sadhguru or Isha Foundation. It, 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 mm. It's just my, it's just the honest, honest um, review of, um, on, on the Shambhavi thing because I've been, I, I've been, I have a personal experience and I'm vouching for it. It's good for you. So anyone out there who wants to go to enroll to inner engineering, please do so. 
Mm, absolutely. Please. It's, it's worth the time. It's worth the money. It's worth the investment. And uh, I do the same thing. Even when I find myself being stressed, I'll, I'll go through the different breathing patterns and, you know, to feel the, well, one, other, one thing that happened is when I had, a, I used to have sinus issues really, really bad, bro. Mm. And it wasn't until I started doing uh, the, this one right here, you know, getting, creating the circulatory within my sinuses and it, it started clearing up. So anytime I feel mm. like a sinus infection coming on, I mm-hmm. go through that breathing technique for at least several minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and it helps, man. It just helps calm me down. And even the the gut sucking one, when you just suck your gut in and breathe out really hard. I forgot mm-hmm. the names of half of that stuff, but you know, uh, I practice though. I apply those, and I, I actually it's another thing that helped uh, with with gut health, but it also helped me lose my stomach a lot too. Just that breathing technique, bro. Mm-hmm. The suck. I mean, you suck your gut in like that for you know five minutes straight. That's an ab workout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. yeah so okay yeah, absolutely mm-hmm. yeah so bro um we, we cover about coaching we cover about um fitness we cover about spirituality now let's cover one thing which is quite close to you which is humor mm. which is like uh i can see bro many of instagram posts has this the word humor around it mm-hmm. yeah and Honestly, bro, I love all your content, bro. On, on IG and Twitter, I love it. But there's mm. one particular favorite which I have to say and share to the audience, audience and listener of the podcast. I think the in this video that you uh, have, you had a killer back workout. You are you are totally you are you have totally exhausted. You were dozing off. I think you were snoring. And then and then you're putting something on your back, right? I'm not sure what's that. I think it must must be something. I think it's a little massage or something. And then I'm not sure. Is it your daughter or your wife? Like they were they held they held the remote control and they and they increased the intensity as and and, and <laughs> due to that you got awakened by the increased intensity. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that was that was that was really funny. I was I was in speeches. I just controlled. I do. I was in burst of laughter, bro. When I watched the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude that was, that was a uh it's a 10 it's called a tens unit uh okay. it's, a, it's a personal massager uh and mm-hmm. there's multiple they like to, and they know me i'm a big jokester bro i joke all day mm-hmm. and so they, they play the prank on me uh but yeah it has different settings on it and there was one i could take all of them except the one is acupuncture there's an acupuncture setting on there mm-hmm and you put that joke on high, man, it shocked, literally shocked the hell out of you. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, was, I was laying there and they decided to prank me and I was really sleeping. People thought I was joking. I know like, I was really sleeping. And when it hit me, it's like, oh, shoot. And it literally shocked me and woke me up. But yeah, I, I like playing pranks on people. But being human, man, um, God, and it's so funny. I don't know if you know to see the post I put out today. I think it was today. Um, People are asking me, my, a lot of my clients, they ask me often, I have this, this, this routine that I go over with them and I want everybody to be able to explain who you are, like, who am I? You know, I also follow uh, Moji. I don't know if you know Moji. I follow Moji a lot too. Moji, yeah. And, uh, Moji, yeah. And he has this exercise when, you know, we talk about the who am I and who is the I that we're speaking to and you know, identify with the I and, 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 and so on and so forth. Uh, and it's similar to that. It's funny. The funny thing about all this stuff is, bro, before I even got into uh, some Muji and Sadhguru and Jay, I was already doing this stuff. And I didn't realize it. You know, I didn't even realize it until I came into it. It's like, oh, crap, I've been doing this stuff. I just didn't know it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the amazing thing is, it's like trying to identify with the I. Like, who mm-hmm. is the I? Who is the I that's speaking? Okay. Yeah. And what is the I saying? You know, is the I really you or is the I somebody else? you know, being able to identify with the I and the the average person can't really answer that question. Mm -hmm. So when we say like, who are you or who am I? It's like, who are the I that you're speaking about? Is it the I that's in front of you right now? Or is the I that's inside of my head that's speaking, Mm -hmm. you know, or is the I that's unidentified by every and every every situation, everything. So when I get asked, you know, who am I? I used to stumble over this question so much and because I never, I couldn't get it. I, it didn't register in my brain. And I would hear that, oh, I'm a nice person. Oh, I'm a preacher. Oh, I'm a speaker. Oh, I'm a personal trainer. I'm, a, I'm, I am all these things, okay? Which is also correct too, because the I is also everything, right? Yeah. But I cannot be limited to a particular thing, okay. right? So when you say, and that's, that's the funniest thing about it, we're searching for answers, but we already answered it. 
okay? A lot of times we already answer ourselves, we don't even realize it. So when you say, who am I? It's like, wow. Mm -hmm. So the I is infinite. It's a simple question. The Mm -hmm. I is an infinite spirit currently pretending to be human. Yeah. And it's human experience. Yeah. So who am I? The I is everything. Yes. The eye is completely any and everything that exists, that breathes. The thing that you see and cannot see is the eye. The part where we get disconnected is that not realizing the eye is just experiencing this human body right now. Yeah, That's the only thing we're doing. So who am I? I'm like, I'm, I'm really everything, but right now I'm experiencing being a human. Mm-hmm. And I'm aware, I, the eye, am aware of the fact that I'm being a human right now. You know, does that mean I believe in reincarnation? I don't know. <laughs> I, that's something I, I haven't experienced yet. You know, and that's something we talk about. They talk about inner engineering as well, too. It's like, don't talk about things that you haven't experienced. You know what I mean? So if you haven't experienced being a soul or a spirit, then why would you even talk about that? Like, the only yeah. thing I know right now I've experienced is being a human, mm-hmm. okay? I have a, I have a, I have a tattoo of a tree on my arm, and I always think about why do I like trees so much? And I was like, maybe in another life I wanted to be a tree. Who knows? <laughs> I, I, I literally don't know, you know. Mm-hmm. But what I do know is that I am currently present in this human body. Mm-hmm. So therefore, I have to be this human body right now, mm-hmm. okay? So when you ask what's a human i'm being it i am being a human okay so i am a human that is being what's a tree i don't know i've never been a tree before but that's what a tree looks like <laughs> you know what I mean? so this whole human experience and again it's a very unfamiliar and a very touchy subject especially when you talk about religion and you know try to categorize uh spiritual you know beings and esoteric talk because you don't want to hear that you are it you are god you are god in the flesh you don't want to hear those particular things only because in religion it has to be something okay it has to be something but in actuality in this reality the only something that you see is this, that's it. And the only thing you can be is this. You can feel and sense, speculate, do all the other things that you want to. Now, we this is, this is the amazing thing about being human. We have the creative ability to think and be whoever the hell or heaven we want to be. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You can pick and choose to be who you want to be. This is the greatest thing about being a human. You are consciously aware of, oh my God, I literally can be everything. Okay. I really can be it. So as a human, as a spiritual being, I am currently being a human. That's why those words get twisted around so much. Just human being or being human. Which one is it? Well, I'm actually a spirit that's currently being a human. Mm-hmm. So what else can I, I be? I can't be anything of her. I can't switch and say, I want to be a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a dog. I'm out of here. Pew! <laughs> you don't get that. You don't get that privilege. You know what I mean? If you, that would be kind of cool if you could just like switch and switch bodies all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Um, but that kind of goes back to the whole RPGM thing. It's like, you know, you're born. But you can reprogram your life while you're here. And when you're yeah. done, who knows? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I literally don't know. Only thing mm-hmm. I know is, is that I am a being a human, which is why I keep encouraging people, hey, be a human. And if you're trying to be human, these are essential things you got to do. You got to take care of this human body. Okay, get mm-hmm. your mind right, eat the right type of foods, keep your stress level low. That's the only way you can maintain this human body until it's done and when it's done then it's done but we don't know what else happens after that so be a human okay be a spiritual being in a human body spirit being human spirit being human kind of sound like holy trinity huh spirit being human (laughs) 
Oh god, this stuff uh, is so interesting. Yeah, bro. Okay, bro. I mean, I do have another four or five questions. I mean, do, do, do you still have time for more questions for around four to five questions? Um, I have. Oh wow, time really flew by. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have to be somewhere for one o'clock, uh, one my time. So I, I have about ten minutes before I have to go. Oh, ten minutes. Okay. In this case, I have to maybe combine the question to. Because I because I haven't started the question about humor, so I try to combine the question and try to finish within ten minutes. Is that okay with you, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just uh, if you got about ten minutes, then yeah. But I have to be on the other side of time in ten minutes. Okay, sure, bro. Okay, right. so um, so my question about humor is that um, in the uh, we are now in the pandemic era, right? We are now in the pandemic era, COVID nineteen infection, all that. So how can humor can help someone? To deal with pandemic, with with the pandemic. Oh, humor! Did mm. you say humor or human earlier? Humor, humor. My bad. I thought you said human. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, why say it's not? It's, it's, it was it was very useful, very insightful. I will I will accept it anyway. Yeah, but this okay. question is about humor. My apologies, dude. I'm sorry. I thought you said human. Okay, mm. uh, humor. Humor is is, is necessary. Okay. Mm. Here's the biggest thing about humor, man. Again, it kind of goes back to us trying to explain life. Like anytime you hear somebody try to explain life, the stories are hilarious because like you can't really explain it. If you sit, I mean, you'll hear, that's like the, the whisper game. You heard the whisper game before? Like you tell one person one thing and by the time it gets all the way back around to you, it's a completely different story, mm-hmm. right? So to me, in my mind, it's funny. It's so funny that we're not realizing our potential, but you're limiting your potential based on a perception and you forcing people to try to implement your perception. Mm -hmm. That's funny to me. But what we're missing out on is the fact that you're so creative. Like, that's amazing. (laughs) So the funny part, the funny part is that you don't even realize you're creating this amazing story. and It's so entertaining. It's beyond, it's so entertaining. So think about it. Anytime you watch something entertaining, it's, Fun, I mean, you're going to get something out of it, whether it's funny, whether it's, you know, horror or whatever. So for me, this life is entertainingly funny. Yeah. It's like, I don't know how I got here, but I'm here <laughs> and it's hilarious. And I think it's funny. So I think it's funny that I ended up in this human body, you know, mm-hmm. so it's funny to me. So why would I not go along with the thing that allows me to be here? Mm-hmm. doesn't mean that I, I, I joke about everything, but it's like there's there's so much humor in this life mm-hmm. okay we take it way too serious okay mm-hmm. that's why i put funny videos out you know i, I kind of have a system where i do a funny video serious talk mm-hmm. then a music video so funny video serious talk music you know because mm-hmm. that's just all aspects of who i am yeah i'll do something funny uh then i have a serious talk then i put mm-hmm. some music video i'll work out video that's just mm-hmm. my thing is what i do but the humor part of it okay is the part that makes us realize that this life does not have to be so dramatic it doesn't have to be so daunting it doesn't have to be so dreadful it doesn't have to be that you know every situation because i've I've been raised in at this point in every economic area possible you know i've been extremely extremely broke you know i've had point in time where i was doing extremely well you know then i've had time when i was just right in the middle you know what i mean right now is one of those times (laughs) like one or two paychecks away from being broke man but <laughs> you know that's just me being honest uh but, but the funny thing is like, that's even funny see that's what i'm saying like just now like i could sit back and be like oh my god whoa it's me and that would just like suck or i could have a positive perspective after i've had my moments which is why i work out so early in the morning see that that early in the morning is my like frustration and get it out and for the rest of the day for the rest of the 18 yeah. hours I'm happy, I'm good, I'm joking, mm-hmm. I'm laughing. That one hour in the gym, I'm not like angry, walk around throwing weights and stuff. But <laughs> but, but in those moments, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm thinking about my frustration, I'm working out. And then, mm-hmm. you know, by the time I'm done, I'm like, whew, I got it out of my system. For the rest of the day, I could joke, be happy, do what I want to do, you know? So humor is so necessary. It allows us to know that life doesn't have to be so serious. And another one thing I, I, I love about, I like comedians. Yeah. Somebody I, don't know, I, I told somebody else is another podcast. I was like, you know, comedians are the best life coaches to me. Yeah. If you really think about it, because mm-hmm. they have a really good perspective 
on a situation and they're able to explain it to you in a way that can go either super sad or and eventually make you laugh at the situation mm -hmm. like think about it they tell some of the dirtiest jokes and you laugh at them like are you really laughing about somebody getting their ass beat it's like come on <laughs> <laughs> you know so think about that like that's why comedians are so awesome to me it's like yo their punchlines be right on point they're telling a the horrible story but then on the flip side of it there's something that makes you laugh right at the end of it you know, and it makes you have a little, a, a different perspective on situations like it is bad, but it doesn't have to be that bad. You know, it's kind of messed up, but it, it, it does, it doesn't kill me, you know, so I can laugh throughout the process, which is why now I see why you brought up that video. So yeah, humor is, uh, it, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. Cause you're not supposed to use that thing to, to shock somebody, but you're supposed to use it to help your muscles heal, but they use it to shock me. <laughs> That uses the shock me, so it, it's necessary. I think everybody, and that's why even the video I put out today, it was just me being goofy and randomly corny. You know, it's like, how often do you see people just be goofy and randomly corny? You know, everything has to be perfect and, you know, looking the part. It's like, no, that's not real life. There's moments when I just do random, goofy, corny stuff, and you're going to see it, you know? So, and it makes, you know, in a world of chaos and calamity and people panicking, it's too easy to put out the negative stuff. Or I could put out an entire video on COVID and the shots and, you know, uh, Delta. I could put, uh, trust me, the stuff I know, I could just talk about it and make everybody sad and depressed. Mm -hmm. But it's like, why? They got, it's enough of that. You know, I like to be known as the guy who makes you laugh, the guy who gives you a different perspective on life, the guy who wants you to be happy and healthy. That's, that's the balance. I'll let them do the negative stuff. I'll do the yeah. positive stuff, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So it's necessary to be humorous. And then, you know, people need to see that, hey, look, life sucks sometimes, but it also has a lot of good points to it. Mm. Well, bro, I mean, yeah, if I if I have the time, more time, I think I, I, I could spend the whole day talking with you, bro. I mean, you are such an entertainer. You are, you are such a pleasure to be with, bro. But then at the same time, I respect your time because you said that you need to live in a while. But I just want to leave you with one last question, bro. So yes. um, this is what a benefit for all the listeners and audience out there. How they can connect with you, bro? Say, wait, say it again? Okay. This is for the benefit of the listeners and audience out there. How mm. they can connect to you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I got one of the easiest names in the world to remember. Ricky get wood i'm the only person in the world, other than my dad uh, i'm the only person in the world <laughs> i'm a junior so ricky get wood junior all you do is google my name you it'll pop up uh, under rpgm and the pop up ig facebook uh, i think i'm on all the platforms except twitter i don't really like twitter that much but uh <laughs> uh yeah just google uh, you put rpgm.us Mm -hmm. Yes, another easy way to find me because this reprogram us. I'm always thinking about reprogramming us. RPGM.us. Um, like I said, one of the easiest names in the world to find me, you know, YouTube and every other channel. Okay, so so which means that you are available on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Did I miss anything out? <laughs> and uh, fa Facebook too. I'm on Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Okay, all right. yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. So all right. the major platforms I'm on there. Like I said, except Twitter. Oh, I don't know. I don't know why I don't like Twitter. It just Never really sat well with me. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just don't like Twitter. Just, I think because people get on there and just start ranting and it's like, yeah. oh, I don't feel like reading all these short rants, you know? <laughs> so, but yeah, you can find me on any of those uh, other platforms and I'm, I'm really easy to connect with, man. You know, you message me online nine times out of 10. As you know, I'll, I'll respond back. You know, it's actually me. It's not a robot. <laughs> it's not a robot. Uh, I haven't gotten to that point in life. And I, you know, I don't, I'll say, I don't, I won't say I never will, but I just, I like, I love personal interaction. I mm -hmm. appreciate that more than anything else. And that's one of my goals is to be uh, not only one of the most influential life coaches, but the most available and personable life coaches, you know what I mean? In the world, that's my goal. Mm, wow yeah i mean bro thank you thank you so much bro for coming for willing to become the guest in my podcast interview i mean i i've i've had a blast talking to you for the past i know one half hour and i don't feel time pass so yeah i think if i think if you if if you don't mind maybe we can do another session in the future if you don't mind because i think you still have more to talk about right because yeah i think we could we could talk the whole day bro and oh, no, also, for a fact we could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then also, bro, I can I can briefly say that 
uh, there's uh, there's only a few person in the world who will willing to wake up four o'clock in the morning to go to the gym, <laughs> and, and and you have you are happy to be one of them, bro. Because yeah, I I used to get messages on on, on Instagram because um on Instagram DM I'll be getting a message around three thirty afternoon. Then I was thinking, okay, I got a message from Ricky say three thirty p.m. Then <laughs> when I when I then when I measure at time it's like four o'clock morning. I was like, are you serious? I mean. You're waking up four o'clock in the morning. You're driving to the gym. I mean, that's the time I'll be still snoozing on my bed. Man, <laughs> and, this, and this guy going to the gym. Yeah, <laughs> you got you got to love it, man. You know, for me, like I said, the the one thing I benefit from it is being able to kind of beat myself. Like I tell you, I, I constantly am trying to beat myself. So those moments when I feel lazy is like that time in the morning it's like well how do i stop from being lazy well you you just get up when you don't want to feel and you don't feel like getting up so mm-hmm. i don't feel like getting up at 3 30 every morning <laughs> but you know i do because i and I'm, i'm programming my brain to say look no if you want to be better you want to be successful you want these different things these are things you're just going to have to do yeah. and when I, if i I'm, again i'm very aware of myself so if i feel like i don't want to do it that's the exact thing that i do so it's like, mm-hmm. i don't feel like getting up at four o'clock in the morning but I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I do it religiously. <laughs> yeah. And also 4 a.m. is also, I, I'm not sure you, you know, not 4 a.m. is actually a time we call as Brahma, Brahma Muhurat, mm-hmm. where, where is the concentration of maximum cosmic energy comes to your brain. So it's a very auspicious, it's a very good thing to do auspicious stuff, including exercise in your, in your, <laughs> in your case. So, yeah. So, yeah, bro. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, man. I'm really honored to be here. Yes, you, and yes, we can uh, pick it up another time, even maybe next Saturday, we do the same thing. Wow, awesome, bro. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you for coming into this uh, uh, interview, bro. I mean, I truly appreciate all your insights and all your sharing and also, and you know, keep keep giving us a humor, bro. I think the world needs needs more, more of that, bro. I got you. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to start doing more. That's what somebody else said the same thing. They just need more humor and uh always a message tied to it so that's that's the biggest thing i want to make you laugh but also give you a message tied to it you know be yourself uh be happy no matter what understand that you can create the life that you want and live mm-hmm. without live without limits man you only get one yeah. life you know so yeah. live it so yes let's meet up next saturday brother and uh, i appreciate yeah. you once again and i pray that you have much success in your podcast and in your business brother thank you so much bro. thank you so much and i also wish you all the best in your coaching business and also keep doing Keep being who you are, bro. Thank, Thank you, so man. Much, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank, Thank you. Much love, man. And shout out yeah. to all your fans. Make sure y'all follow and share his stuff. Okay. Thank you so much, bro. Take care. Thank you, man. Take care, Take brother. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.